on Star FM. We're talking soul food. And I am super excited to be joined back in the studio by Bishop Musa. Bishop Musa, good morning. Good morning, Tani. Good morning, Zimbabwe. Lovely to have you back. Thank you. All right, and we are continuing with a a topic that we started last week. Africans, not Africans. Yes. All right, and you bring with you a guest, but before you introduce him, if you can give us a background, and then we can carry on. Okay, last week we started on a very wonderful topic when we were talking about... Um, the power and the grace of God that is in Africa and uh, we, we also checked in the scriptures and we discovered that uh, the likes of Abraham, the likes of Jacob, the likes of uh, Joseph, uh, all of them uh, at one point they had uh, a covering ye, ye Africa when they visited Egypt uh, we discovered also uh, that even Jesus Christ himself, when Herod wanted to uh, kill him when he was just uh, a baby, God instructed Joseph to take Jesus to Egypt until uh, Israel was a better place again. So we discovered that Jesus Christ also had a stint in Africa for about uh, five years, uh, which means God had something uh, for Africa. Uh, even when Jesus Christ was going uh, at Mount Calvary, you know, the Simon of Cyrene, an African man, was chosen to help Jesus to carry the cross. Which means, Jesus, uh, if Angeli, I see a foreign thing, she put it in the Hatakatunziba, eh, ah, ah, Maruakatu involve a uh, salvation, a uh, Yepasiris, uh, we are part and parcel of what uh, God did. So we discovered that Africa, not just by those who do not want to see Africa rise, but even those who are in Africa, whenever us pastors tend to speak about Africa, we are speaking about negativity. We are speaking about witchcraft. We don't speak about the treasure that is in Africa. We don't speak about uh, the good things that are found in Africa. Therefore, Africa, in Fana Nezinu, jiri negative. Tika tarasa karipa msoro pa, eh, pa Farao eh, of Egypt. Tika tu whenever somebody mentions Farao, Farao becomes a symbol of cruelty, a symbol of bondage. Whenever Egypt is mentioned, ono do maestro dina andi zokere kwa Egypt kwa dakar. It's like, yeah, yeah you, know, you know, we are like we, we associate we are, Africa with curses. With curses, yes. You know, eh, whenever we are talking about our forefathers, we are talking about the generational cases that they right. brought on right. us right. but we do not speak about the generational blessing <coughs> uh, that they brought because for the gospel to to prevail in africa it means when it was brought here they accepted it you know by just accepting the gospel there is a blessing on that but where is the blessing in our lives oh, every time but not around sort of the africa we are talking about cases so those are the things that we were talking about last week and today uh, we brought our, uh, we brought in a, a guest, uh, Libert Kingsdale. I know I know dealer. Ne my issues are nechukita ne Africa. Ne could discover the heritage of Africa. Bisho. Ah, chiro muka ich unuka na misa pa 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 me. And as long as I'm planning, I'm planning little little and all of that. Okay, so tuna Kingsdale. I said about Sirao Nasi. Could the active Jigreo. Besides what we see in the scriptures, is there any African in history who who, 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 who made it or accomplish Wow, this is somebody from Africa. Because but practically it is Africans. Absolutely amazing. Welcome to, to you, sir. Liberty, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you, Terry, for having me. Lovely. Now, I have uh, had the honor of coming across some of your literature that you have written. You've written, uh, I think, uh, two books that, if I can remember, The God's Hustler and uh, Dare Your Dreams, Challenge Your Limits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very and. True. Um, I think you are the right person to explain and maybe to answer the question that was trending last week. 
All is right. the black man cursed? Definitely no. Um, the problem that is with Africans is not spiritual. The major problem is mental. Um, because you cannot see the whole picture, the perfect picture of yourself, unless you jump from the frame. And we have allowed other people to define who we are. And because we accepted their definition about who we are, then we remained attached to that particular frame. And we, that frame can be a case, uh, can be slavery, can be colonization. As long as you say, associate yourself with that, then definitely you won't see the perfect picture of yourself. So uh, today, um, I'm just going to be dealing with one example in history okay. that I think is so much significant so that um, out of that example we can be able to siphon motivation, siphon strength, siphon a positive attitude that can gear us towards um, positivity as we progress into the future. I'm going to be discussing about uh, a man called Hannibal Baca. Um, Hannibal G? Baca. Okay. <laughs> Thank right. you so much, Bishop. Hannibal Baca um, was a son to a man called Hamilka Baca um, back then in Tunisia before Christ. BC, uh, during the days of the Roman Empire, when the Roman Empire was expanding tremendously, and the Romans uh, closed and they came to 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 Carthage, which is modern day Tunisia, and when they come to Carthage, uh, they destroyed Carthage. Now Hamilcar Barca took his son Hannibal Barca, and put him to blood oath, and he said, "Promise me that you will do something." about this you avenge Carthage of the brutality and cruel that we have suffered at the hands of the Romans and Hannibal Baca was only nine years at that particular time and at nine years old he carried it in his heart and do a term that he was 19 years old so at 19 years old um, when they'd gone to uh, Iberia which is uh, which is Spain he had gone to Iberia with his father and they were there in Spain at 19, he felt that he had come of age to go back and avenge Carthage of what had happened during uh, back in the day. And then he marshaled 40,000 men, 40,000 men, uh, with 37 super war elephants that he went on riding. And his mission was one, I'm going to tumble Rome, you see. And when that happened, Hannibal Baca is, is, is going, but on the way, because he was a man who was so tough, he always chose the most difficult path. Okay. The most diff Even when the Romans knew that Hannibal is on his way coming, he crossed the Alps. Um, Alps, are, actually, they are big mountains, so much humongous. Uh, they uh, stayed up to 4,000 4, meters above sea level, 4,000 meters. And he was there um, going up with those elephants going to conquer Rome, but on the way he lost uh, about half of his army which means he was left with 10,000 men mm -hmm. when he came to to France that's when he marshaled uh, 20,000 more men and his army went back to, to 40,000 people then he went you know and he he plundered and he plundered and he plundered and he went through the marshes when the Romans were expecting that he might come using this direction he was using the most difficult path. And this is a 19-year-old man. And he went there. And um, for 15 years, he managed to subdue Rome. Wow. Now, this is um, an, a, a, an authority. Rome was the capital. Um, that was so much significant during the Roman Empire. And their authority and their power was something to reckon <coughs> about. You see. So that's the big one that I want to be talking about. Maybe before we go any further... You may have something to, to speak yeah, I, I was just thinking that, uh, you know, uh, this is, it is soul food and we touch on uh, spiritual matters, religious matters. And today we are focusing on Africans, not Africans. Okay. And uh, there was a covenant that was made with a young boy. Yes. At the age of nine. At the age of nine. So what, what happened during this covenant was, uh, did his father uh, keep, you know, uh, did he have like a mantra that he needed to to say to himself every single day so that he does not forget the covenant? Because I don't think that if 
you can sit down with a nine-year-old mm -hmm. and say, please, can you avenge me or avenge uh, 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 Carthage? Carthage. Uh, that nine-year-old is going to carry it on. Is it something that was consistently... All right. Yeah, um, I, I think it was something that was consistently hammered okay. um, in yeah. him because they went to Iberia, which is Spain, and he observed, he <coughs> observed his father in battle uh, for those 10 years. And at age 19, he felt it's now time for me to go and avenge Carthage of what happened back in the day. Okay. Um, and he managed to do that. And for 15 years, he was in Italy, you know, subduing Rome, using war tactics. Uh, until a time that, um, because all that time I was in Rome, until Rome had to use uh, attritional uh, warfare methods, they had to go to Carthage, then set Carthage on fire, and when they did that, yeah, yeah. Um, word came to Hannibal that now Carthage is, is under attack, then he had to abandon this. But by the time he got there, there was a man called Scipio Africanus, who was already there, in, uh, a Roman army general. Um, he attacked Hannibal, and that's when he was defeated. But my point is, since we are dealing with African, mm. not African, mm. um, there is an I can attitude, which is supposed to be engraved in an African native. And we are supposed to be seeing or viewing Africa from a threefold perspective. Number one, we can view Africa from a continental perspective, which is the landmass. Um, Africa, this one the continent, you see. Um, then we also have to view Africa from uh, the people's perspective. We have brothers and sisters, our ancestral figures, fathers that were poured into other nations like a drink offering during slave trade and they were taken there. Now you don't become less African because you are somewhere in Asia or in America. You remain African no matter which continent you are placed in because African being African is something which is which is in you it's beyond the skin it's it's actually how you are formed and mechanized then number three we need to deal with africa from a historical perspective and on this particular advantage we have to see what the bible say about africa in history um i can concur to what bishop musa um, has been saying at the beginning of the program that um the hebrews came to egypt to feed because in the bible there are three nations that represents Africa. The okay. first is Egypt, uh, which was the capital of civilization back in the day in ancient history. Yeah. Uh, then we have Ethiopia. And if you look so at in Ethiopia, other words, you're saying civilization started, started in, in, in Egypt, in Africa. And during yeah. those days, it was not the Arabs that occupied northern parts of Africa. Those were black men. I'm talking about Hannibal Baka, and Baka means lightning. Um, Han uh, Hannibal was not a, a, a white man. He was not an Arab. He was dark skinned, you see. And when he went to Spain, actually, they got to Spain there, and there's a city called Barcelona. Barcelona was named after Baca's family name. Oh. And, yes. So that's African legacy, uh, which is there in Europe. So we can trace our roots back to, the, um, to, to how it was formed. You see. So, so there's Egypt, there's Ethiopia. Then there's Libya. Libya. Those are the three nations that are uh, uh, that talk much about Africa in the Bible, and this was the black man who was there in the northern parts of Africa. And now, if you look at it, the Hebrews come to feed; they came looking for food in Africa, but not so many people talk about that. How much we fed the Israel, and they, they live talk about how <clears throat> we enslaved them exactly. And actually, the Bible says then arose a pharaoh who knew nothing about Joseph. Joseph. Yes. That's the pharaoh who enslaved the children of Israel. Now, I want to bring clarity on that. History says, because, okay, let me give this background, Terry. Um, Egypt is the center of civilization, and writing started in Egypt. Yeah. The word paper it comes from the word papyrus, uh, and those, uh, those scrolls were made from papyrus. They would harvest the reeds from River Nile and make papyrus. Now when they make papyrus, they would actually write records on those papyrus. And they use what is called black ink. Black ink uh, is something that if it tints you, it becomes like permanent for some time. Okay. So records were there about the contribution of Joseph in Egypt. 
Now, it's impossible for a pharaoh who knows nothing about Joseph to arise from the same lineage of pharaohs. What happened so that the Bible says, and arose a pharaoh who knew nothing about Joseph? Uh, it is said that there was an invasion that happened in Egypt, which displaced the original lineage of the, uh, lineage of the pharaohs. And when this particular pharaoh came, because he had no background and no history about Egypt, he knew nothing about about Joseph. About Joseph, you see, then he is the one responsible for putting the children of Israel under slavery. So right. we, as Africans, as the indigenous Egyptians, as the indigenous Bantu folk, we were tolerant to them. We embraced them. We fed them. We gave them the best of our land, which was Goshen, which means we revered God. Which means when they came, was when Israel was was traveling, my travel and I'm wow. Exactly. So when they came to Africa, by just accepting Jacob, we were accepting the God of Israel. Of Israel. Because Jacob and here Israel. Which means by doing so, there has to be a blessing. Because God speaks to Abraham mm -hmm. and says, I'm, I'm taking you to a land that I'm going to show you, and I'm giving, you it, 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 giving it to you as an inher in, for an inheritance. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to bless whoever Bless you. blesses you, and I'm going to curse anybody who curses you. So when Jacob comes in, <coughs> the blessing of Abraham, and Pharaoh says, bless me, mm -hmm. which means I can accept him. Where, where Jacob? Where is the blessing? Why is it that we're not talking about it? Why is it that the blessing has not been activated? It has not been activated because nobody spoke about it. Exactly. Which is the point why the African narrative has to change. Because if the African preacher can stand on his pulpit and say you are coming out of Egypt with a clean and clean mind, that's a colonized revelation. It's perversion, it's not revelation. Okay. It's decadence. It means your mind... Hey. It, it means your mind is suffering from from some kind of sickness right. because you can't say that about your motherland so uh africa egypt made a significant contribution in history now i want to talk about this hannibal Baker. you see how much he did to an extent that a european military historian by the name of theodor doge he said these words uh he said hannibal Baker is the master technician of modern day warfare now this is an african child this is an african brother who, who actually is ranked amongst the great people like alexander the great um people like napoleon he's ranked amongst those people like um, julius caesar and we know he's nothing ranked. about him i'm yes. hearing the name for the first time here yep so if a 19 year old boy could go to tambo a roman empire which was the talk of the day and the America of the day. The Amer yeah, you can say that. The America of the day. A 19-year-old boy. And he went to Iberia, which is Spain, um, through the, 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 the... He went to France, and the, because his army declined uh, by half, he went to France, and the French, then were called the Gold people, he went there and he managed to marshal an army again of 20,000 people on top of what he had. Managing under him people that speak different tongues, you know, different languages. A 19 year old boy with such a capacity and he managed to conquer and subdue the Romans. So where do we get all this information of, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> and trying to just go for more and more and more deliverance and, and how can our minds be delivered? Okay, Terry, thank you for that. Um, I said at the start of the session that the, the, the challenge with Africans is mindset. Yes. Mindset. And if you have a colonial mindset, you always depend on someone to deliver you, someone to do things for you. You never take initiative, which is why. And religion is coming also, uh, is coming also in a way that is blinding people. By saying religion... I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't mean being a child of God. Yes. Because Jesus was not a Christian. And the problem that we do uh, as, as believers is trying to think as Christians. Yet God says, uh, be like I am. We are made in God's image and after his likeness. You see. So unless we start thinking and seeing ourselves from 
the perspective of God, uh, then we'll always be dependent at the prayer of someone else. So our minds had to be to be to be delivered. Because Anambuya Ramwe, Anambuya Wekwana America. But no, when they're talking about them, they're always talking about the positive things that they brought in. When they're talking about the Mother Teresa, when they're speaking about the, the Queen Elizabeth, what they have done in contribution in Kusimuka, England and everything else. But when we are talking about Anambuya Wedu, Atsuta Oraonejo, Unu, Wakanaka, Wakati Zizisao, the respect that we, we have. It's just right now, uh, discipline in way now, it was installed uh, first by, 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 by parents, by, by, by relatives, before you became born again. Wakati zizisao, Dara Wati Mukaona Munu, Uyoshikuru, Munye and Baba, Mukaona Munu, Uyoshizimai, treat that person as your mother. That was good. No one talks about it. When we are talking about our relatives, we are talking about witchcraft. Sometimes it's just an assumption that because in Dimbuya Chet, maybe Kusaroba, Kunundiu. But can we acknowledge Kutusuni here? Fine, Huru, Huriko. Yes. But uh, now it, it seems as that is our main focus. Yes. Those we are, are talking more chete. about that. We want to pull away, we want to get delivered, we want to, you know, a free generation from all of that stuff. In other ways. Sorry. Mm. Um, let, me, let me say this, make this point. If you look at slave trade, um, how it happened, there were two brothers that were called the Barclay brothers, the owners, the founders of the Barclays Bank. Right. They funded for three whole years, they funded, they were the initial funders <coughs> of that project before in, uh, every other financial house came to help on that. And they gave loan to anyone who was willing to embark on slave trade. Now, on slave trade, they would come here, arrest our ancestors, take them through the sea, and pregnant mothers uh, would be thrown to sharks in, on the sea. And those that become sick on the sea, they'll be thrown to sharks right, again. Right. Now, tell me if Barclays Bank is still standing today. Is Nangozi liquidity? You even feel like your money is safe more at Barclays Bank. Yeah. You see? But look at how um, the cruel they, that they did. Um, the, the, the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth, mm -hmm. um, the first, after the first guy had come from Africa with slaves, then she saw that this project was paying handsomely. Then she made a big ship and she named the ship Jesus and took that ship to Africa with that guy. And when they came here, they half visited more Africans and went with them to Europe. When they got there, you see, uh, they sold them um, into plantations and stuff like that exploiting their labor and, and, and all every other evil thing happens. So what we're saying is we have the innate gift of results. We can. We can. We were born with that ability to bring results. To bring results. My point is this. Um, until today, the, the royal family in England, they are still famous. They are still rich. Despite what they did. Despite the evil that they did. And mm -hmm. once the Seguru Yamun one, maybe in self-defense. Zonzi <laughs> ngoz iyo and very ku honda mushawin. You see. For years and For years. years and years and it years. It can't be appeased. Kuna satan we churungwe no jishona. Satan is satan. The devil is the same. Satan is satan. Right. And kanangoz iriko. Akuna blood red blue. Blood is blood and it remains the red is, uh, like that. So I think our major problem is mindset. We have to be delivered from that. Even the word of God says, says that be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. You have to know who you are in Christ, what you stand for and what you are supposed to. Uh, I, I know the, the, our time we, we, you know, our time is out and uh, we are still continuing with this for those that uh, have just joined us we were live streaming on our Facebook page that's at Star FM Zimbabwe go through and check it out Yvonne Tivachke on standby with the news mm -hmm.